Good evening and welcome to the City of Boynton Beach City Commission's meeting today, Tuesday, December 1st, 2020 at 5.33 p.m. Uh, Alan, would you please provide us with an introduction? Oh, John. Actually, actually, it'll be John. Hello, my name is John McNally and I'll be providing assistance to the mayor and the elected officials during today's meeting. Before we start, I'd like to review a few housekeeping items so the public audience knows how to participate. Your microphones have been muted to reduce background noise during this public meeting. There will be specific times during this meeting when members of the public can ask questions and provide feedback. The first way is by typing their question into the question section at the bottom of the GoToWebinar interface. Those items will be read into the record by a meeting organizer at the appropriate time. Please be sure to include your name for the record. The second way is by using the GoToWebinar interface and clicking on the raise hand option meeting organizer will announce the speaker and unmute their audio, at which time the speaker should state their name for the record. Before speaking, please take steps to minimize any sources of background noise and speak clearly into your device during your allotted time. I will now turn control over to Mayor Stephen Grant, who will be presiding over today's meeting. Thank you, John. We will start off with an invocation by Rabbi Dr. Solomon Rothstein, the police chaplain, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Christina Romulus. Rabbi, it's your ear. Yep, please okay. go. I will lift up mine eyes into the mountains. From whence shall my help come? My help cometh from the Lord, who made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. For he who keepeth thee doth neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall keep you from all evil. The Lord shall guard your soul. The Lord shall guard your going out and your coming in from this day forward and forevermore. Amen. Amen. O oh Lord, when the psalmist recited these words so many hundreds of years ago, he did not realize then what we would be facing today. And so the prayer is very, very true to us this day. We do turn to you, O oh God, for help at a time that is frightening for a period that we don't quite understand. And we know that just as you were with our ancestors, as just as you were with those who went before us, so too will you be with us today. To give us the wisdom, to give us the strength, to give us the understanding, to make the kinds of decisions that will ennoble us, not only to one another, but before your eyes as well. Be with us, O oh God, be with all our loved ones, be with our precious community, and may we grow from strength to strength, and may we grow in greater faith in you, O oh Lord, and in our destiny, and let us all say, Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. May I have a roll call, please? Mayor Stephen B. Grant. Present. Vice Mayor Tyson Serga. Present. Commissioner Justin Katz. Here. Commissioner Woodrow Hay. Here. Commissioner Christina Romulus. Present. Mayor, we have a quorum. Wonderful. Moving on to agenda approval. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Um, the only thing that I'd like to add uh, after speaking with the, the city manager is that uh, put out an announcement for the MLK committee uh, to be speaking. So I'd like to put that as C. Motion to approve as amended. Second. Okay. All right. A motion and a second. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. 
Moving forward with informational items by members of the City Commission. Commissioner Katz, would you like to begin? Thank you very much, Mayor. I had a phone conversation with uh, Davey Camelier about his property on Federal and Boyd Beach Boulevard, and I also uh, met with Bill Morris and his representatives regarding um, CRA owned property uh, on the west side of Federal and Boynton Beach Boulevard. And also, I, I know after this meeting is the lighting ceremony I will be uh, attending and I will make it there as quickly and safely as possible. So please uh, give it a couple minutes. I don't know what the schedule was, but I did not want to miss it. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Hay. Uh, I have no disclosures, but I will be making the lighting this afternoon. So also give me a couple of minutes and I'll be there uh, as quickly as I, I can. All right. And uh, Commissioner Romulus. I have nothing to disclose at the moment, except for hopefully everybody had a happy Thanksgiving. And next we have uh vice mayor pinserga thank you mayor i have nothing to disclose at this time all right as for myself on november 18th the 21st uh, i did my best to attend the uh, national league of cities virtual conference uh they did have uh, pres uh president-elect joe biden there and his commitment to work for work, work with the cities i attended some uh environmental uh, uh seminars and I, I'll have a hopefully have a presentation at the, the next meeting of some of the things that I've learned. On the 19th, I attended the Fire Station One mural unveiling. On the 23rd, I went to the Boynton Beach General Employees Public Pension Meeting. And so I'd like to inform the, the commission that we decided that the expected rate of return, I believe, for the pension is 6.9%, which is under the, the city's guaranteed interest of 7% for the drop. So that will affect next year's budget um, because everybody in the drop will have to, you know, based upon actuaries, we will have to put some more money into the, the pension fund. Um, in addition, uh, on the 24th, I went to the Del Delray Beach Chamber of Commerce's legislative luncheon. I had uh, nice uh, meetings with uh, new state Re representative Amari Hardy, along with uh, state representatives Mike Caruso, Kelly Skidmore, uh, Rick Roth. In addition, uh, State Senator uh, Tina Polsky was there. Um, some of them, some of our representatives have already had their legislative agenda decided. Some of are still open. And I think uh, that this is something that hopefully we'll speak at uh, either next meeting on the 15th or beginning of January. Um, you know, the, the big year is that it's not necessarily, we don't really expect money from the budget, but it's different ways of the legislature writing bills for, in our favor and not against us, I think is going to be very important. Uh, I hope everyone had a safe uh thanksgiving and was able to enjoy uh spending time with friends and family over the long holiday uh shopping locally uh also and i just want to remind people that you may have opened up your bubble to other people so be mindful of uh you know others as we come into this holiday season um as you know we, today was our coldest day since march and when we're inside together uh to be mindful of the fact that you may have a, a disease that you that doesn't show or may be beginning, and we need to all work together to make sure that we are safe and healthy. In addition, on the 29th, I attended a, a Zoom uh, meeting with our sister cities to celebrate the one year anniversary of our sister city relationship with Ferendola, Italy. And as of today, I went to the Dune Restoration, uh, worked with the Institute for Regional Conservation to plant uh, a total of over 200 plants in our dune system to help restore biodiversity. And they said in about six months to a year, we'll see start seeing those trees come up above the, the sea oats. And that is it for uh, my disclosures.
Are there any other disclosures from the commission before we move on to announcements? Seeing none, our first announcement is Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day ceremony being held at Tom Kaiser USN Boynton Beach Veterans Memorial Park on Monday, December 7th at 12 p.m. CDC guidelines will be followed. Uh, our next announcement is that the lighting of downtown Boynton on Tuesday is today, Tuesday, December 1st, 2020, immediately following the city commission in front of city hall. And I do believe the CRA is doing something at Dewey Park as well. And so that will be subsequent to uh, the one in front of city hall. In addition, the last announcement is the MLK committee, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Birth, uh, holiday is next month. And so uh, requested that uh, Eleanor reach out to the previous MLK task force to decide certain aspects, what they would like to do um, moving forward, uh, whether it's a, a CDC socially distance gathering or whether it's a drive-through, um, hopefully find partners to help support our community as well. And that is it for announcements. And we will move on to public audience. Uh, John, I see that you have opened up questions and uh, hand raising. That is correct. All right. And so individual speakers will be limited to three minute presentations. Please state your name and address uh, before you begin. And as a reminder for any uh, members of the public who wish to participate, uh, clicking on the little hand icon at the bottom of the GoToWebinar interface will signify that you would like to speak and you will be unmuted in turn. Or if you prefer to type a question, there is a sort of a chat box or a question box. So you are, feel free to type your question in there and it too will be answered in turn. All right, we do have someone here in the audience. Hey. Uh, great to be with everyone this evening. Uh, my name is Chris Nordstrom. Uh, my address is 1059 Grove Park Circle. Um, and uh, it's great to be here with everyone uh, this evening as somebody who's watched a lot of city commission meetings but never participated in one. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool for me. Um, I'm here this evening. Uh, I was given the fortunate opportunity to, uh, to assist the mayor this month um, with uh, some of uh, his initiatives. Um, including ending the digital divide in, in Boynton Beach, uh, environmental beautification, uh, which the mayor mentioned earlier, uh, with uh, the dune restoration that uh, we participated in earlier this morning, um, as well as uh, economic development and creating pathways, uh, career pathways for folks of all ages in the city. And so uh, I'll be assisting the mayor with uh, these initiatives and just uh, general communication. And so uh, you might be hearing from me, uh, my email will be chris at stevenbgrant.com and uh, my phone number is 561-501-3783. And um, yeah, really grateful for the opportunity. And um, yeah, thanks. Thank you. All right, anyway, I do see a hand raised from uh, online, uh, Ms. Wilson. I've unmuted you, now you are self-muted. If you could unmute yourself, we will give you the, the floor to speak. Hello? Hello. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, hi, hi Mayor Grant and the City Commission. Uh, Alexandra Wilson, 2040 Northwest Second Court. I just have a follow-up question for the uh, commission. As we all know, we experienced a horrible death um, last week with the ATV and a vehicle driver. Um, a couple of years ago, I asked, um, I asked the city, what are we planning on doing as far as making it safe for the ATVs and the drivers? You guys told me that you were in conversation with Derry Beach uh, about doing something with this. I would just like to know what have the city and Derry Beach done, like the follow-up? Are you guys planning on building a uh, facility that the ATVs can be more safe or like what's the update on that? Um. Ms. Wilson, I am sad to hear uh, about the, the death on the, the ATV. Uh, this is the first news I'm hearing of it. Um, and so uh, that is just something that uh, I'll, we, as the commission, will hopefully request uh, information from our police chief 
to respond at the, the next meeting of the issues of not just ATVs, but dirt bikes and what we are doing in the city and what are the, the current rules and how do we plan on enforcing those rules. Um, and so, no, I'm, I'm sorry to hear about this, but I, I do not have an answer for you as of this meeting. And hopefully we'll have one on the 15th. Okay, I'll, I'll check back in on the 15th. Okay. And John, do you have, see anyone else asking a question or raising a hand? Uh, Mayor Grant, no, I do not. All right. No questions and no raised hands. Okay. And so, seeing no one in a uh, request to speak, we will move on to advisory board appointments. We currently have only five spaces left on uh, our advisory boards. We have the, the Building Board of Adjustments and Appeals. There's two regular and one alternate position. There is one voting student position on the Education and Youth Advisory Board. And there's one alternate position available on the Library Board. Moving forward with consent agenda. Would someone from the commission like to pull an item from cons uh, the consent agenda? Uh, I'd like to pull item F, the proposed resolution number 20-134. Okay, uh, resolution, is there anything else? Hearing none. Item 6F, authorize the mayor to sign an interlocal agreement between the city and CRA for the funding of the tree canopy coverage project. Um, this morning, I spoke with our sustainability coordinator, Rebecca Harvey, and I thought it was important for the, the city to know what's going on. So, Rebecca, are you available to speak about what's happening? Um. All right. Rebecca, I see that you're self-muted. You know, it's flashing back on and off. All right, Rebecca, sorry, can you try? Yep, we heard you a little bit. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Now we can. Okay, good evening, Mayor and Commission and City Manager. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. I don't have a presentation planned, but I'm available to answer any questions. Um, essentially, the, the background on this interlocal agreement is, um, was it uh, November 10th that the uh, CRA board approved the interlocal agreement, having previously um, allocated a budget line of $60,000 $350 or $650, I believe, for um, tree plantings within the CRA area. And this was in following up on the resolution that City Commission passed on September 1st to adopt a tree canopy goal to increase citywide tree canopy from 16%, which it is currently to 20% by the year 2035 which entails planting approximately 3,000 trees per year citywide, including both investments by public and private sectors and private residents. Uh, so this would be our contribution for this fiscal year. And um, as the sustainability coordinator, I'm very grateful to the CRA for allocating this budget for um, adding trees into the CRA neighborhoods, which are some of the target neighborhoods that were identified through our tree canopy assessment um, project. And our, so our general plan with the funds is to split the, the funding uh, half and half going to half going to the public works department to focus on planting in medians and along streets in targeted areas where their trees are most needed throughout the CRA. And the other half going to the sustainability office 
to focus on um, plantings in open spaces within parks um, and making those events that the community could get involved with, such as with our, our ongoing partnership with Community Greening. Um, and uh, we could plant somewhat smaller trees than the code required trees that are needed for our medians and along streets when we're doing tree planting events. So our ballpark estimate is that through the park plantings, we can plant probably 300 to 400 trees with these funds. And with the public works uh, larger tree plantings along streets, that could be maybe 80 to 100 trees more with that portion of it. And um, the departments will be contributing the amount to, um, the, to pay for the labor involved in planting trees because the CRA funds is specifically only for covering the costs of trees and materials. And so we will be procuring the vendors to plant the trees and organize the events and um, request reimbursement from the CRA after we do so. So I'm, I'm happy to take any questions that you have. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Rebecca. The so the the aspect of it is that we're using some of the funds to buy um, mature trees along the medians, which we will get less. But we in our certain parks will be able to buy a lot more trees because they will be um, more of a sapling in nature. Um, is it something that we could try to plan to have uh, another fruit forest in the the CRA area? We certainly could, if that's of interest. Um... To the to the commission. So I'll, uh, I'll ask the, the commission: Is that something that we want to try to focus on as well as a, a fruit forest to help with the, the tree canopy of you know avocados, mangoes, guavas, and other types of uh, tree canopy fruit trees? Mayor. Yes. Um, with those trees, would that be accessible to the public? Yes, similar to what's in the, the Sarah Sims uh, Park yeah, area. That, that's why I asked. As long as they're accessible to the public, then yes, I'm on. Okay. No, so I'm for it also. All right. Perfect. And so I guess we'll give you uh, some direction then, Rebecca, to help uh, with one of the areas or to see what would what we can do with creating a fruit forest or fruit forests in our parks. That's great. That sounds good. Um, if I can add just one comment, Mayor, you mentioned um, the word saplings, and I would just um, correct a little bit that the trees planted in parks will still be 15 gallon size trees. So they would be like nine to 10 foot trees, not oh, very wow. small sap. Well, but yeah. they're much less. Okay. So that, that's kind of where I was hoping that, you know, there there's, we use quantity and quality aspects of the, the money in the city. So where, you know, with quality, they cost more with quantity, they, they you, you try to get more for less. So that's kind of where uh, I was hoping that we have the, the good mixture of both tree canopies that are mature and trees that aren't as mature, maybe the three to five gallon uh, size. Okay. Sounds good to me. All right. And so, if, uh, seeing no further comments, may I have a motion to approve? So move. move. Second. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Uh, moving on to bids and purchases over 100,000. May I have a motion to, uh, would, uh, would someone like to review the, the vehicles purchased? Motion to approve. All right. Okay. All right. Seeing no further comments, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing aye. none. Yes. Just a quick comment, a quick question to staff on this. Um, are we still um 
for the vehicles that are being replaced, are, are we still, I guess, doing auctions with those? And, and um, I know, Mayor, one of the things that we've done in the past is try to give a vehicle or so to South Tech or something. Is that still something that we are doing? Um, we are selling at auction here, um, and, and we, we can reach out. I have a feeling things have been paused on that program, Commissioner Romulus, but yeah, we can always, if the commission's good, I think we have this discussion tonight, each year we'll do that. If we can identify a vehicle or two for Park Vista or, or South Tech, um, knowing moving forward, you're all good with it. We'll do it each year. We'd be happy to. So we'll- That has my support. All right, so, yeah. um, I don't think we need to change the, the motion uh, because this is just the approval of the, the vehicles. However, um, based upon uh, the directions of the city commission, um, we would like to extend an offer to uh, the different high school programs teaching uh, auto uh, maintenance. In addition, um, we'll go from there. And so I think also South Tech does Marine I don't think there's any time soon that we have those or the value of it, but Lori, if you could come back with us to see if there's any other sort of electrical equipment that we could partner with, or not electric, electrical, uh, any sort of vehicle or equipment that we could partner with our local schools or nonprofits. Um, I'd like to do that also in the future. Okay, we can find out which school offer the that type of program. Okay, and so uh, to finish the, the motion, uh, did anyone oppose? Hearing none, uh, the motion uh, for item 7A passes unanimously. Moving Mayor, forward. this is Mayor Jim Sheriff. Did you yes, have a motion on the, the balance of the consent agenda after you took the one item off F? It was I a motion on I F. Did, but yeah, I'll, uh, I will do another motion for approval on the uh, or the unpulled items for consent agenda under 100,000. So moved. moved. Second. Second. Thank you. I have a motion Thank and a second. You, I see no further comments. All those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. In addition, we will move Mayor. on now to public hearing. Mayor. Yes just wanted to chime in real quick. Uh, thank you for to the city manager and to the commission as well for um, accepting the donation of these vehicles as they get passed on. I think this is important, especially today in light of being Giving Tuesday. So thank you very much for that. Yeah. Next we have a uh, public hearing. Uh, our first is uh, proposed ordinance 20-039 second reading. Uh, Jim. An ordinance of the city of Boynton Beach, Florida, amending ordinance 02013 to rezone a parcel of land described herein and commonly referred to as Wells Landing North from C2 neighborhood commercial and R2 single and two family residential to MU1 mixed use one, providing for conflict, severability, and an effective date. Right. Now, may I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All right. Um, is the applicant uh, here? Uh, did anyone from the, the commission or public have any comments regarding this ordinance? Hearing none, may I have a roll call, please. Mayor Grant? Yes. Vice Mayor Pinserga? Yes. Commissioner Katz? Yes. Commissioner Hayes? Aye. Commissioner Romulus? Aye. Vote is 5-0. All right, thank you. Motion to approve Wells Landing North uh, for a mixed-use development consisting of a three-story building with 24 affordable housing dwelling units, 8,530 square feet of commercial space, associated parking, and related site improvements. So moved. Second. All right. Is there any further discussion from the commission or the public? And um, I was looking back at the minutes, and we did have uh, someone from the public ask about if Centennial uh, Manage It or Wells Landing LLC is going to have job or career fairs 
um, with this uh, site plan. And so do we have someone from the applicant who could respond? I don't think so. Um, Mayor Grant, this is John McNally. I was told a Brian Herbert or an Elizabeth Roke were the either the applicant representative or the applicant, but I do not see them in attendance. Okay. So I know that we each have a, a relationship with Centennial, so I, I believe that that's what they're going to do moving forward, but we'll get a con confirmation for next meeting. Um, is there any further discussion? I believe I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Now we're moving on to proposed ordinance number 20-043, second reading. An ordinance of the city of Boynton Beach, Florida, approving the abandonment of a 25-foot wide portion of Southwest 6th Street right-of-way consisting of a portion of the unimproved swale abutting the east lot line of the property located at 704 Southwest 25th Avenue, authorizing the city manager to execute a disclaimer, which shall be recorded with this ordinance in the public records of Palm Beach County, Florida, and providing an effective date. So moved. Second. All right. Um, I received an email from a resident that is less than a block away from this address. And there was, she showed me the pictures that are flooding there. Um, I received multiple comments from people in Chapel Hill regarding flooding that has gotten worse. And uh, I'm not ready to move, move forward and voting to this approval uh, because we can't keep on allowing buildings to come there if they're not uh, keeping the water on their property. And so I, I'm not gonna be voting in favor of this because we, as a commission, needs to make sure that the this is a swale area where water is being held until I can get engineering that this is not going to be an issue. I can't vote in favor of this. So, Mayor, I'd offer to uh, withdraw my motion and substitute a motion to table. If, if you were able to share that email with the rest of us, I, I did not receive that email. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll give it to the, the city manager. I forwarded it to uh, Colin and had a conversation with him. So, um, uh, I have a motion to table. Is there a second? I'll yes, second. second that, Mayor. All right. I have a second from Commissioner Romulus. Okay. Is there any further discussion from the commission? Saying simply none. not not on this item particularly but simply that um you know I, I do i have been working with colin and with lori in the background regarding you know chapel hill and regarding lake Boynton estates several of these communities that um just are really facing major water issues whenever there is a rain event so that is something that i really want to you know ask for the support of the commission along with you know just continuing to uh, support staff in whatever capacity possible to create, uh, you know, long-term plan and vision for how we improve these communities um, because it's it's only getting worse uh, as, you know, king tides and, and other situations happen, hurricanes get more intense, and uh, some of these residents, they end up getting stranded in their homes, water coming into their living rooms. Uh, we, we need to really fix this problem. So um, this is something that I see as a priority for us moving forward. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, as we are looking at these different studies and flooding, uh, absolutely include Northwest First Street. That's been a problem for uh, a long time, and it's 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 also getting worse. So make sure that we add Northwest First Street uh, into that uh, study. Yeah, and so we yeah. Do as a city. Is that Ms. Fraser? Uh, That's Mr. Fraser. George, George okay. Fraser. Okay. All right. And so I, I'd like to, to finish this, uh, the tabling, and then we can talk about stormwater a little bit later. Um, sure. Is there any further discussion on this issue for tabling? Seeing none, all those in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Um, yeah, also, I was driving by a uh, northeast area north of Minor Road, and uh, there was uh, flooding there uh, when it went into sunny day. 
And so this is something where I, I explained that for decades, we were talking about climate change affecting Florida. This is an example of it with uh, the king tides, um, the excess building, uh, not enough trees. And so this is something that if we are trying to be a sustainable and resilient city, we need to be more cognizant of the, the building that we're doing here and the environmental aspects of the of any time we are losing green space or trees. And so that is it. We're moving on to new business review and action on annual performance evaluation for the city manager. Uh, Julie? Our HR director. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. I'm Julie Oldberry. I'm the Director of Human Resources and Risk Management. And um, each year, you have the opportunity to um, evaluate our city manager for her performance over the past year um, and make any determinations regarding any compensation adjustments. Um, for this matter, um, I had sent out evaluation forms and the ones um, that I received back are included in the backup. And I can turn it back to the commission for any action they wish to take on this matter. Okay. Um, you know, I'd like to, I'll, I'll begin. Uh, you know, this is, this is not something that we thought was possible. Uh, having a pandemic here in the, the city of Boynton Beach. And the, the fact is, is that it was probable and it did happen. And so that's something that, you know, we as, I guess, not even just the city of Boynton Beach, but as American citizens of the United States need to realize the, the aspect of an infectious disease, um, because I don't feel like this may, is going to be the, the only time in my lifetime that we have an issue like this. And so this is something that it's scary that we need to be planning for this from now on. Um, you know, uh, one of the, the aspects of what our city manager did was, uh, you know, we followed the guidelines from Palm Beach County. You know, we didn't, you know, I request, or I suggested a, you know, kind of a, was it a curfew because we didn't need to declare a state of emergency in the city. We are operating under the counties, but we needed to create more of an urgency because of the disconnect that we received on federal, state, county levels of what was in the best interest, where one week it was okay to not wear masks and the following week everyone had to wear masks. And it, it's difficult where we don't necessarily have uh, the best information to move forward. And I feel like we definitely got, had a lot of missed opportunities of joining together in our centennial year as a community with a lot of different openings that were, were planned to happen that, that kind of stopped. And so it's, it's tough to judge, uh, you know, it's tough to give someone wonderful remarks when wonderful things do not happen. Um, and that's kind of where, you know, we are, have our own level of participation as uh, elected officials for the city. Um, for myself, I kind of want to be more of a hands-on mayor, getting involved with the, the schools, the nonprofits, the, the businesses, and, and answering uh, the residents when I can. Uh, and so this is where we received you know, information from the city manager that we're no longer to direct, you know, pose questions to city staff. It's everything goes to the city manager or the city manager's office, which I think is the correct procedure moving forward. Um, as we are this, we don't need to give uh, the department heads two different directions to go into, or even give them any direction to go into. That's the city manager's responsibility. And this gives us the the misstep uh, or the not enough information I feel of how our city manager interacts with all the different departments. And 
I wrote them out because I think we all need to hear everything that our city manager does and why she receives such high remarks from our city commission. We have the building department, the planning and zoning, police, fire, information technology, the clerk's office, human resources, public works, sanitation, parks and rec, marketing, economic development, public arts, finance, and I almost forgot the library. So, you know, what I'd like to have us to do is, as for the, the city commission, it's kind of trying to get a, uh, you know, trying to get either a unified level of uh, um, reporting uh, from the city manager to the, the different departments so that we can understand what has happened, what is happening, and what will happen. Uh, we do the strategic plan once a year, and that is an overview of all the departments all at once, where we don't necessarily have the time to do look at every single of those departments I just mentioned. And so I'm requesting, you know, either quarterly or biannually um, reports with uh, these departments so that we have a better idea what what has happened. And so the the information may not always be fresh but if we learn something new that is something i feel is important for us all um and that's that's kind of where i'm at is that you know we didn't think something was possible and it happened anyway and so that's kind of where with our next budget we we need to do a better job uh planning and we saw what has happened in the this 21st century you know uh, this 21st century now we are in our third decade now it's uh someone reminded me that it's 2020 to 2029 is a, is the decade and you know how do we provide information to our residents to all of them um you know uh eleanor showed me an old newspaper uh before we had our fun fair magazine where we used to give uh, the city would provide uh, news stories and activities and businesses and that is something that we, uh, we that we may want to do in the future in addition our city manager told me we used to have a videographer before social media is that something that we want to help start funding so that we have, are giving out the, the the best content that we can to our residents and so this is something that you know we as the the commission need I think need to do more than just once a year on the strategic planning of the of how our how are we sailing the ship of the city. And so um, after speaking with the city manager, she says she's okay with the uh, the general employees uh, raise of I believe two percent, which I'm okay with, and that we we have that discussion whether it's now or at a, a soon meeting uh, before the budget hits of how we get the, the reporting from all these different departments, um, not necessarily on a weekly basis. I do enjoy the, the weekly report, but it's the different planning and zoning to see how many permits are in the backlog, how many permits have been issued. And you know the, the community standards, I really appreciate that uh, just so that we know that our, our employee, uh, the employees are being proactive. And so that, that, those are my comments and I'll, I look forward to hearing from the rest of you. And so do we have any volunteers to go second? Mayor? Yes, oh. Commissioner Katz. Thank you. Um, so I'll, I'll say the same things I've said in years past. I think the, the city manager does a, a fine job. I'm not particularly a big fan of, uh, evaluations you know of this nature which have dozens of items and things like that that's a, a byproduct of the school system and convoluted evaluations so i'm biased against them but um in general i just i think that you know we have a, a high quality city manager we had obviously some some unprecedented major events this year and, and the city by and large i think was able to navigate them positively uh our fiscal situation is you know, it's it's borderline un, untouched. Um, and, and we've seen, at least I've seen, you know, newspaper reports from other municipalities in, in, in the county um, that had a lot more uh, trimming to do in their budget to try to balance their budget 
Um, whereas we, we didn't really have to deal with that. And I, I'm gracious uh, to the staff and to the city manager for not having to, to get more involved in the budget and start cutting things that we might not want to cut because they, they made the tough decisions and presented us a balanced budget um, for all intents and purposes. We also had, uh, you know, other kind of man-made crises and issues that cropped up during the course of the year. And I think that, um, you know, just from seeing the pandemic in general, I I've learned a lot about leadership and crisis management, whether it's at the school district level or at the city level or, or my own endeavors, whatever I'm up to. Um, and I think that the, the city manager has, has acted in, in swift and appropriate fashion to address a number of issues um, that, you know, someone of a lesser capacity might not have done so cleanly. So I'm just uh, appreciative of her efforts um, and I look forward to, to continuing to work with her. Um, I'll, I'll support uh, your, your comments that um, a discussion at some point in the future on the commission about some sort of unified reporting, not, not because I necessarily have any personal complaints, but because I understand that with five different elected officials and all of us asking different questions or wanting to know different things, it might be easier for us to direct a format um, you know, that satisfies all of our needs so that everyone gets the information they want. So I think that's a, a good idea to work with the city manager on to make sure that that if, if there's a desire for uh, more consistent or more robust reporting from various departments, that that we make sure we collaborate with her to see what's possible and, and what our needs are and if she can satisfy them. And that is all. All right, thank you. And so, uh, Commissioner Haig? Uh, yeah, without repeating everything just been said, I, I agree with you. I'd just like to say that uh, uh, truly I, I, I've seen it on both sides. Um, I really appreciate the balanced budget being given, but uh, I appreciate the way she handles prices. Uh, she has a passion for the city of Boynton and uh, I, I've seen that firsthand and I think she, she handled it uh, professionally. Um, I just feel that uh, that workshop, uh, that little discussion, that dialogue you're talking about, I think would be uh, beneficial. I'm all for that. Uh, I've I've worked with uh, other, well, I talk with a lot of city managers and uh, when I look at some of the issues that they're having within their cities, uh, we don't have those. And I think it has a lot to do with, uh, with our city managers approach to uh, problem solving. Uh, within the great city of Boynton. Uh, we have the third largest municipality in Palm Beach County. And yet, uh, when you look at the, 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 the issues that come up, uh, ours is way low. And I, I attribute that to uh, the good management team as well as the leadership of our city manager, Laura Leverio. So I will go along with what you're stating uh, with the uh, addition of that workshop or that discussion coming up later on uh, down the road. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Romulus. Do you have any- Mayor, uh, I'll, let, I'll let Vice Mayor go first. Uh, I believe he's been waiting since after you spoke. Okay, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I don't wanna repeat everything that's already been said, but um, I've spoken to Lori, I've, we've had our evaluation conference and I've given her the praises where I think they are well deserved. I think the handling in terms of the city, uh, in terms of what we can handle uh, with respect to the pandemic uh, was well executed. I know I, I've spoken with her uh, in terms of working with the county. How do we get those testing uh, mobile sites? And uh, she was instrumental in her relationships with the county. Staff was instrumental. So overall, I couldn't be happier uh, with our city manager, as well as the other uh, managers we have on staff. Uh, but also, I, what I do want to spend more time talking about uh, are my primary, I, I, many critiques I've, I've given to her, but one of them, it seems to be uh, resonating with the others, with the rest of you, is the reporting issue. Um, I know that they do provide you know, their standard city manager's report, 
uh, but I've always thought it was a little bit sporadic. Sometimes we'd get it this week, sometimes we'd not get it until several weeks later. Um, and so I would be in favor of having that conversation about having a unified uh, reporting system. I think that will definitely be one of my long-term goals. But my, my biggest concern is this, you know, today we have Lori, but we won't have Lori forever. And, and so I'm concerned about the future. And right now we have an excellent city management staff, but what happens down the road when we may have, you know, somewhat acceptable level of performance. And so for me, I would prefer uh, to have as much information as possible. You know, I understand that per the charter, that is uh, their uh, domain to execute, but I would like to have as much information as possible so we can help them kind of like give oversight and give feedback because we want to catch problems uh, before they start. And if we're not aware of what's happening in various departments at that level, then you know how can we uh, accurately judge her level of supervision, her um, involvement? I, I don't know, right? Because we're not speaking to all of these departments to find out what's happening and how things are going. So um, moving forward to the future, I'm in, I'm in favor of more information uh, so we can provide a kind of oversight as to what's happening and catch things early. Um, and uh, I'll end my comments there. Okay. All right. So, uh, Laura, do you have any uh, comments as well? And then we'll we'll get a hopefully a motion for your contract for the next okay. year. You still have. Still here, Mr. Romulus. Oh, sorry, Commissioner Romulus. You know, <laughs> yes, yes, I apologize. And I, do, I yeah, defer and basically gave up my entire time slot, huh? Uh, okay. <laughs> Yes. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and I, I wanted to just kind of hear the comments from my colleagues prior to speaking, because um, I always just like to like have all the information first before making my comments known. Um, you know, Lori, Lori and I have gotten to know each other over the last almost five years. It's been almost five years since I, uh, you know, got elected to this seat, and um, you know, it's definitely been a roller coaster, I would definitely say, uh, over the years. Um, but this past year, uh, you know, I, I I believe I've gotten to lo know Lori not only as a leader but as a, a as a person um, through our um, joint, you know, walk through leadership Palm Beach County, um, and and also you know in in this capacity uh, going through a, a worldwide global pandemic that no one thought was coming, and yet it did. And in addition to the pandemic, all the other hiccups that happened along the road, and I call them hiccups, but that's most likely an understatement for the, the amount of things that were thrown at us as a city. Um, yet all the way around, you know, mistakes or not, um, intentionality or not, um, you know, whenever I picked up the phone and called Lori or whenever I texted Lori, um, she was always quick to say, okay, let's, let's work together to solve it. How, how can we, you know, fix it? Um, you know, what, what's, what's your perspective? What are you hearing on the ground? And, and I think that's the mark of a, of a true leader and of somebody who is um, good at their job, um, where they admit where, you know, failures happen or they admit where mistakes happen and they, they ask, how can we fix it? How can we do better? Um, and and that's that's the the real mark that I'm using to to grade Lori um, this this uh, evaluation period. Um, she she's she's been a strong, well-rounded leader. We've always known that. Um, but I think in the midst of the storm and in the midst of some of the really difficult times that faced our city in these past few months, uh, she stepped up and she asked you know to help when she could and she she you know. It, it admitted when she needed help um, and, and when she, she could be better at the job. And, um, you know, uh, we're all leaders. We're, we're all, you know, imperfect human beings. And that's, uh, you know, for me, that's the mark of a true leader where you're willing to admit fault and you're willing to admit when things don't go the way you exactly plan, but you can implement a plan to fix it and prevent it from happening again in the future. Um, you know, and, and, and this is 
what I saw this uh, this year and these past few months uh, with Lori. Um, and in addition to you know some of the comments that Vice Mayor mentioned in terms of secession plans, that's something that I've been speaking about since you know I got elected. Um, how do we continue the progress of our current leaders um, and what the city is currently doing and, and keep that moving forward. Um, and that's something I'm, I'm, you know, I'm content with in terms of the progress that I've heard back from, um, you know, our public works department, our, um, our administrative department, where we are creating secession plans, we are putting leaders in place, we are cross training people and making sure that they know the things that they need to do to you know, work across multiple departments or multiple um, levels if something's out, if somebody has COVID, COVID or, or whatever it may be. Um, and, and all that stems from, you know, the leader at the top who's willing to kind of do anything and everything to make make it happen and, you know, keep keep steering the ship in the right direction. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, pretty verbose in, in what I'm trying to say here, which is overall just to say that, you know, you know, Lori, I, com I commend you for the work that you've done um, this 2020, uh, this year that basically went to hell in a handbasket for all of us, <laughs> but somehow, some way, um, you know, we, we still pulled through and, and we still managed to, you know, come out with a, a clean budget and, and our, our city is at, in, in my opinion, in, in a at its pinnacle in terms of development, in terms of growth, um, in terms of where you know we as a commission set the vision, you know, back in 2016, um, where we wanted to go, and and all that is coming to fruition through the leadership of you know yourself and and multiple department heads and you know the commission that has a a strong mind um, and, and a cohesive vision for where we want to go. Um, so that, that all, you know, that's really what I have to say. Um, and, you know, I, 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 I think there's always room for improvement. I, I'm, I'm not, you know, praising you and commending you as, a, as if there's, there's no room, you know, for improvement there. There definitely is. And, you know, we know where we can improve. We know where we can do better. Um, you also know this based on, you know, feedback that you've gotten from, from me and, and from individuals uh, in the public with situations that have happened in the past. Uh, so we will continue to address those um, and we will call out the mistakes and fix them when they happen. And we will pat you on the back when the good things happen and we will continue in that manner. So with that, that is all I have to say. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, city staff for all the things that you guys are doing and for having gotten us, you know, we're not all the way through it, but getting us to this point so far in the midst of all of the chaos that has happened in the past few months um, in, in this city. So thank you all. All right, well, thank you. And is there anyone else from the city commission that would like to speak again before I ask Lori, uh, give the floor to Lori? All right, so uh, city manager. Thank you, mayor. And thank you all, I think, um, the reason um, we're successful, not me, it's all of our team and it's all of you and our continual communications, our honest feedback with each other. You won't hurt my feelings when you're you're not happy with the way something ha happened. And so I encourage each of you to please keep that, keep that communication open with me because my job and my passion is to do the best absolute job I can do for the five of you and for the city. And I have to say, I've probably never been more proud this year with this pandemic and what it has done to our city in terms of disruption and of, of just the norm. Uh, our staff team has been brilliant in being able to react, respond, change, improvise, be resilient, rethink how we do things, not interrupt our services to our residents, um, support our employees through a through a crisis as well they have just on a personal level um and, and that isn't that may be me as a city manager as a leader but i tell you it's the team doing 99 percent of that work so those that are all here and listening uh, we are a fantastic team i'm very proud of our team and um we are aware we are aware of areas that need to be fixed and improved absolute awareness um 
working on some great things with, you know, performance measurement to help us do, you know, there is going to be a dashboard here. I can't say exactly too soon, but within the year, we're hoping, and David and our, our strategic plan team's working on, to be able to have all that reporting and that data at your fingertips. That's our goal, and that's, that's, that's what we're really working toward. So we're now working on developing the systems to properly collect the data and collate it to a meaningful information and then be able to put it on a dashboard. In the meantime, I, you know, I did have a discussion with several of you of what I, I, I know we're not, you know, I want to do better reporting to you and we have so much information. So and we, we want to tell you the, the good work we do um, and, and recognize the areas that we can improve. Um, if we don't learn something new every day, we're, we're selling ourselves and our community short. So uh, not one of us know everything and I'll always, always be uh, willing to learn and ask for help. And our entire team does that. We hold each other up, we support each other. And I think that's what makes us such a good team. So I look forward to a discussion. We have some ideas of continuing maybe the weekly report, doing something better on a, maybe a quarterly basis. But the real goal is the dashboard that I think will be amazing to have. Uh, and our team's working really hard on it. So uh, I, again, I, I love my job. I love working here and watching the city transform. And I appreciate each of you and working with you, you're, you are truly all a pleasure to work with. And I've got it made from that standpoint, I have to tell you, you know, and it doesn't take far to you know, look around. So um, just keep the communications open with me and you, you know, we are here to serve and hold all of you up to do the best we absolutely can. And we are, we have a, a team of committed professionals that will continue to always do that. So thank you. And I'm, I'm privileged to continue to serve. So I love it. Okay. I don't want to cry. <laughs> All right. So may I have a, a motion to renew the, the contract with a, a two percent raise? So move. Is there a second? second. Yes, right. second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, state so by saying aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Thank you all. All right, and that is it to the, the future agenda. And so I'll request the, the commission to uh, have on the future agenda, a discussion of the ATV dirt bikes in the city and what uh, our police are doing and what we can help do to give people a recreational activity um, uh, as, as in a similar fashion. Uh, Mayor? Yes. I, I wouldn't mind like a, a report from the police chief, but I'm, I'm not particularly open to fostering increased ATV and off-road vehicle activity in the city. So I'd, I'd maybe as part of the discussion, so I won't necessarily stand in its way, but the, the path I'm looking for is to educate people that all-terrain vehicles and off-road vehicles probably shouldn't be used on roads. And that is the safest thing that a city can do is encourage people to use those devices on the appropriate terrain. So I'll, I won't object to the discussion, but I, I just want to put where I'm at that I don't think the city should be doing anything but promoting safe and legal use, not trying to foster some gray area because it's, it's dangerous to use those vehicles on, on roadways for pedestrians and users as we all are now really aware of. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll hear from the, the police chief and see if there's, you know, what is legal and safe if right. there is an opportunity to do that. Understood. Okay. And I guess that is it. All right. And so if there's nothing else, John, or yeah, would you like to close the meeting? Oh, uh, yes, Mayor. Mayor. Uh, hold yeah, hold on, sorry. hold on. Oops. Um, Eleanor asked me to remind you, we're going to downstairs for the lighting. We're going to meet at the K POC tree. Okay. 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 And as a reminder, a recorded version of this session will be posted to the City of Boynton Beach's YouTube channel. Links to that channel are available on the City of Boynton Beach's website at Boynton Beach.org. This concludes today's meeting. On behalf of Mayor Grant and all of our elected officials, the city manager and city staff, thank you for attending the City of Boynton Beach Commission meeting. Be safe and have a great evening. All right. So.
If it's almost 640 now, we'll try to start it at seven. Is that okay, uh, Justin, Christina, Woodrow? Yeah. Yes. All right. See you guys there at seven. Okay. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.